I'll try. I did not want to move to Nashville and be a gay songwriter. I just wanted to be a songwriter. I loved what you were doing. The textures you were doing, I think, are great. You know, I wasn't writing autobiographical songs. Hiding was a part of life. Name the openly gay country artists in Nashville. Ready, go. That's a huge problem. We weren't out as artists because we knew what that meant. We were scared. Now that you're a woman, can you hold your own? I don't think I ever regretted being out. I think I thought it would have been a lot easier to be heterosexual. So that's, I mean, come on. It's so obvious. There's no getting this in the closet. There's just no closet big enough for this. I mean, I can split wood like a lumberjack, you know. I mean, I just wanted a pair of khaki pants. I mean, there was Mick Jagger and David Bowie and, you know, the androgynous men who were out there doing their thing. But there were no androgynous women. Women didn't like to hear women. That's what they told me. Of course women buy other women. Who do they think bought Loretta Lynn? Who do you think buys Amy Lou Harris? I mean, come on. It doesn't matter who you fall in love with, who breaks your heart. Do you think you could love me? Do you even want to try? A love song is a love song. I really do think I've always known I was gay. It's no secret. But maybe it is. Maybe, you know, there are people out there who just, they don't know. But, surprise. <laughs> Yeah, there's a huge number of, of gay women songwriters who don't get in front of an audience. We were writing the songs for the, you know, for country radio songs. It was a lot of us. <laughs> I don't know how many one, number ones I've had. Barbara Mandrell, Ronnie Millsap, Charlie Pride. It's a Willie Nelson single called There You Are. Oh, and Smoky Mountain Rain became the Tennessee State song. It was wild to just turn on the radio and hear your song. Ring on Her Finger, Time on Her Hands, which was our first single, and Dixie Road. Both uh, number ones and all that stuff. Reba McIntyre, Martina McBride, Art Garfunkel. Reba asked me to be in her band. My next gig was with Garth Brooks. <laughs> and then that's when Mi Vida Loca became a hit. I am so happy when I write a song I like. I swear to God, yeah. if somebody offered me a million dollars for that great songwriting feeling, I am convinced I would take the song. Wow. I do feel like in the, in the country music world, there is a price and there is a real strong pull to keep people quiet. A lot of these people like to be known as the guy who will say it, who will stand up for Christian American family values. Girl, what were you thinking? You know, the bottom line, hun, is sometimes we just don't feel what you feel. I mean, it's kind of like your song, Shut Up and Drive. Well, shut up and sing. Like you could tell, he was committed to confronting me. He dug his heels in, and, I, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that if I'm not mistaken, that's the guy that I, I think his daughter has come out since. Ain't life something? Small town blues, small town I don't care what people think anymore. This is about the music. And if you have a problem with it, then you don't listen. You don't listen to Ruthie Foster. I'm cool with that. <laughs>